looking at the weather, but it looks like it's going to be a gorgeous night out on the water. So today we're taking a cruise around the sunset. Inner Harbor of Baltimore. All of you to take as many pictures my little as mini cruise you before starting my DMP program. We'll so stay those. tuned. Does anybody actually have cameras? Like those disposable cardboard cameras? Not, nobody has those anymore, right? So just phones. Good. Take as many pictures as you'd like. Post them on social media. Please tag the water taxi. Please the tag Rentator. Tour. Tour. That's my Rent company. And you can tag okay. me personally too. My name is Chris Real, and I am at Real Deal One Two Five R I E H L D E A L One Two Five on Twitter and Instagram. We would love to get as many great photos as possible out there on social media. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not one to brag, but I recently competed in a worldwide competition sponsored by a tourism marketing firm and I was named the third best tour guide in the world. Unless you consider yourselves very lucky. I'm pretty confident that I am the best tour guide on this boat tonight. And I will do my best to prove it. All right? So, oh, what do we got? We've got giveaways, Louis? Yeah, giveaways. How oh, about that? I didn't even know we were giving away prizes. We consolidated all this. Yeah, a whole bunch of junk. That's not junk. That's high quality beverage pooling technology right there. Thank you. <laughs> so, once we get underway, ladies and gentlemen, if you have Thank any you. questions, about a building, about a landmark, about Baltimore. I am your guy for those questions. If the boat is on fire, you're going to want to talk to one of these guys, all right? Uh, we didn't anticipate any emergencies. Lois has already gone over the emergency procedures, and these guys are the best in the business, so we have nothing to worry about. Oh, thank you very much. Getting there is half the fun. All right. So, guys, Right, All right, very good, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get going here, let me ask how many of you are Baltimore natives, Baltimoreans? Oh, we got a lot of Baltimoreans on board with us tonight. Fantastic. How many of you are from other parts of the world, other parts of the country? Just call it out. Where are you from? Oh, I live here. You live here now, but where are you from originally? Boston. Boston. Okay, we'll allow it. Texas and Florida. Texas and Florida. Wow, all right. Texas, North Carolina. Okay. North Carolina. All right, so we've got the South represented. That's fantastic. Well, welcome aboard, everybody, and thank you so much for taking this tour with us this evening. We leave from Bells Point, which is one of the oldest communities in Baltimore. First laid out in the 1720s by a family of English workers called the Bell family. And that's why many of the street names in Bells Point have those English names. Streets like Lancaster Street and Shakespeare Street. And right along the waterfront here, of course, is Thames Street. That's right, we call it Thames Street here in Baltimore, not Thames, as they say across the pond, because we do things our own way here in Baltimore. Right along Thames Street, there is a pub called The Horse You Came In On. They claim to be the oldest continually operating pub in North America, tracing their history all the way back to 1775, before the Declaration of Independence. They have been open ever since then, serving drinks to their thirsty patrons. One in particular may have made his very last stop at that pub back in 1849. He was last seen at that pub and later found, passed out on the side of the road, muttering incoherently and wearing someone else's clothes, not far from Fells Point. We've all been there, right? It's a pretty relatable experience. Anyway, he was taken to a hospital where he managed to survive for several days, but he never fully regained his senses and he was never able to tell anyone what had happened to him. He eventually passed away and the circumstances surrounding his death remain a mystery to this day, which is appropriate because he is considered the father of the modern detective story. In addition to his short stories, he's also well known for his poetry. His name, of course, is Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe, not born in Baltimore, but died here in 1849. 
buried in Baltimore, not far from the campus of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. And of course, our football team named after one of his most famous poems, The Raven. As we make our way out into the harbor, we can see behind us Bells Point disappearing in the distance. Again, one of the oldest maritime communities in the city of Baltimore. Well known during the early 19th century for their shipbuilding. One of the primary ships that were being built here in Fells Point was a two-masted topsail schooner. These ships were not very large, but they were very fast. And so they were the preferred method of transport for what we call privateers. Privateers. Privateers were issued a letter of white and a wow. All right. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> That's how we do it in Baltimore. Getting back to the early 19th century, these privateers were issued letters of mark and reprisal, which meant that they were legally allowed to pilfer. To, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Pilfer? Pilfer, I think that's the word. Pillage! That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Why couldn't I do Pillage the British merchant fleet. While we were at war with the British during the War of 1812. So we called them privateers here in Baltimore. Here in the United States, we called them privateers. The British had another name for them. You know what the British called them? Pirates! The British called them pirates. In fact, the British considered Baltimore to be nothing but a nest of pirates because of those privateers sailing from Fells Point during the War of 1812. Now, the War of 1812 is a somewhat forgotten war in American history. It doesn't get a whole lot of attention, but it was extremely consequential because in 1812, the United States was still a brand new country, and there was a great deal of doubt as to whether or not this country would make it, would survive. The British, even though we had won the revolution, even though we had earned our independence, were not treating us as a sovereign nation. They were interfering with our free trade. They were kidnapping our sailors and forcing them to serve in the Royal Navy. We demanded they stop. They ignored us. And so, in June of 1812, we declared war on them. They were only on our fourth president, James Madison. So it was a very bold move to declare war on what was then still the mightiest empire in the entire world. Now, for the first part of that conflict, the British had their hands full with a fellow called Napoleon, who was starting trouble in Europe. But after Napoleon's first abdication, the British were free to set their sights on what they called the young American upstarts. So they send ships from the Royal Navy across the Atlantic Ocean, and those ships sail up the Chesapeake Bay, and they begin a campaign of terror, looting and pillaging all up and down those bay towns and communities, farms and villages. And then, in August of 1814, the British invade the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. The American defenders in a town called Bladensburg were ill-equipped and not prepared to defend the city against these seasoned British Marines. The British forces met the Americans in a town called Bladensburg. That's where the battle ensued. The battle is a generous term. The British, in fact, called it the Bladensburg Races because of how quickly the American defenders dropped their weapons and ran away. The British confidently marched into the nation's capital. All of this happened so quickly that President Madison's meal at the White House had already been prepared and laid out on the dining room table. The President, his wife, Dolly Madison, all of the government officials packed up important documents like the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution and fled the city. The British make their way into Washington, D.C. They march into the White House. They help themselves to President Madison's dinner. 